All right, guys, well, here it is, December 20th, the last day of the second shotgun season's here in Iowa. And Max behind the camera and myself both have a doe tag to fill. We're back down here in Lee's farm. Haven't been here since we were able to finally catch up with that GQ buck. So it feels good to be back out doing something. Tomorrow, the late muzzleloader season opens. And what we're going to do now, Max and I are going to head up to our spot. But we're going to join Jared back in eastern Iowa. And he's going to go over what deer that he's going to be chasing the rest of the season. And then uh, at some point, we'll catch back up with me and uh, we'll kind of show you my plan. So there's a good section of standing beans up here. We're going to be tucked into a fence row in the corner. Hopefully, we'll be able to fill two doe tags by the end of the night. And we're going to join Jared right now. All right, finally, when this episode airs, bow season will be back open here in Iowa. Seems like it's been forever. I'm excited to get back in a tree. I'm out here shooting the Hoyt, getting things ready. Um, but my plan over the next couple days is to check cameras, find out which bucks hopefully made it through and which ones I, I likely have a shot at. Um, my plan, I think right now, is to start with the Big Ten. I'm hoping he'll be back in there and on a little bit better pattern than he was during the rut. I mean, regardless, he's a challenging buck to hunt because of the property, but I'm hoping he's at least in there to, to give us a shot. I, along with the rest of the team, have a lot of tags, so I expect to have some good hunts between now and the end. I personally am going to try to hunt pretty aggressively, just kind of a nothing to lose mentality with the days numbered. Uh, to follow along with the hunts, you guys can always check out our daily channel and, and follow along on a daily basis. The other thing I wanted to share that we're excited about is we finally have some new Midas Whitetail gear available. I'm hoping this link will be live at the time of this episode airing so you guys can follow that and uh, hopefully get some new gear right before Christmas. It's been a long time since we've had some new stuff, so we're excited about that. Um, as always, we appreciate your guys' support. Good luck if you're out hunting, and I hope everyone has a great Christmas. It's the afternoon of December 20th, Sunday afternoon here, and we are set up on the CRP farm. Uh, I kind of wanted to give you guys a little update as, as far as what I've been doing. I've kind of been MIA the past month. I've been doing a lot of filming most of the month of November after I tagged out in late October and uh, made a few different uh, filming trips. So I spent a couple weeks doing that. Basically, the last part of the first split of the bow season, we were trying to get Hunter on a buck and had a really, really good encounter. Uh, with a deer we call tall brow uh, big tall brows big eight pointer solid eight pointer he was just a, on the other side of the river from us you know we grunted him in he came in looking you know we snort wheezed at him he'd come in and look and he made a big scrape there i mean he wanted to come he just didn't see anything and so anyway that was a really good way to end the first part of the bow season there so basically after the uh, first part of the archery split uh, turns into shotgun season here in iowa and Basically kind of been taking it slow, trying to kill a few does here and there. Um, got the new Bushnell Banner 2 scope put on my muzzle loader. Got it swapped out, uh, put on, got it shooting good. Um, and this is one of my favorite times of the, of the year, you know, get together with some buddies that you normally don't hunt with and put on some deer drives and sit with them. So Hunter and I have been messing around on some public land trying to fill some doe tags with the hunting public boys. We had a really good week with them. They ended up uh, shooting a couple bucks here the past couple days, but we decided to get Hunter a second season shotgun tag. So uh, we had that one buck in mind that had been showing up on the cutty backs there pretty regular in a little food pot in the bottom on the town farms, what I call it. And uh, we were able to make one hunt on him. Saw a lot of deer, but unfortunately he didn't come out that night. We had about every other deer in the food pot except that deer that night. But uh, then the next uh, day after that, got some bad news that. Uh, a family member had called the landowner and he was yeah, curious if he could hunt the late season. So um, we just figured it'd be better for us to stay out of there. So, you know, that's just how it is on permission ground. And uh, hopefully they can get that big wide eight pointer killed. Anyway, we're set up here on the CRP farm. And basically this is our last shot. You know, we're set up way, way up here, here in the back. And uh, this is Hunter's last night with a gun. So hopefully, uh, some of these deer make their way out of this bedding across this little CRP field. There's a deer, we don't have a name for him, but a uh, big gnarly deer, massive. Got a couple stickers off his left G2, but I think he's got a broken uh, G2 on his right side, but definitely a solid mature deer. There's another deer that's only got a half a side. We actually filmed him back at the end of November. And there's another deer that's 
uh, just a real tall framey good looking buck so hopefully with any luck we can get a couple deer to come out i think he'll take a crack at whatever comes out but uh as far as my late season plans go iowa late muzzle loader season opens up tomorrow monday the 21st so we'll definitely be out after a couple bucks probably this week we got christmas and stuff and i think hunters gonna be going for four or five days in there but i think i can get my buddy justin to cover for me if we decide to hunt it's supposed to be warm the next couple of days so not real sure how much hunting we'll be doing but you know there's always a chance that a new buck shows up i got a couple different farms that we can run cameras on and uh, see you know what's on them i got the river farm uh, where i killed my buck we had a couple good hunts this week uh, during shotgun season we saw a lot of really good deer down there just nothing that uh, came in range for hunter so that's definitely gonna be a farm i'll focus a little bit of late season on and uh, those other two deer so hopefully we can end our night with hunter wrapping his tag around his first iowa deer if not we'll definitely be hunting these next couple weeks you know kind of keeping an eye on the weather these cold fronts so uh good luck to you guys if you have a tag and uh, as always we appreciate you watching midwest whitetail max and i got in with about 10 seconds to spare we had two bucks in the beans of course Last night there were zero bucks out here. I mean, there was probably 25, 30 does. I feel like this was a sure sign it would be an easy, easy deal. And they were all right here. But we had the two bucks. Now we got a bunch of does coming out, but they're way out of range. But hopefully these bucks will push them right over to us. It's looking like we're gonna have to wait for that update as far as what we're gonna be doing for late muzzleloader. Because we're in the action right now. Like I said in the beginning, hopefully we fill both these tags. Because if we don't, that's our fault. Yeah, it's like right to our left. Dude, she's going to be at like five steps. Well, as you can see, it's daylight, and uh, Max and I are done for the second shotgun season. The plan worked to perfection, except that I muffed uh, Max's shot, unfortunately. So when I let go of this camera, I didn't have the fluid head locked, and it went boop, boop. But he smoked his doe. My doe is at about six steps, and we heard him both crash. That was so much fun. We were just talking about it, laughing. And uh, while we've got daylight, what we're gonna do is go get both of those does, tag them up, get them back to the house, and then I'll close out everything, just kind of talking about what to expect for the late muzzleloader. So that was a lot of fun. I, uh, you know, I don't get to use a gun very often, but I uh, got to just have a hunt with a good friend, 
and uh, excited to get them back and finish out the night. <laughs> well, we're back at the house here. As you can see, we got the does taken care of, and the one that's actually hanging behind me is one of the biggest does that I've ever had the privilege to take. It was a great night, lots of fun. Max and I accomplished the goal of punching two doe tags. And as I mentioned in the beginning of the hunt, pretty much the whole reason we went out there tonight was to give you guys an update on what you can expect from me on the late muzzleloader seasons. But fortunately, we got covered up in deer right away. And that brings us to this point. So I guess for me, it's, uh, it's pretty simple. I mean, I've got two targets that I'm gonna be going after. They're both nine pointers and they're on two separate farms. So I'll start with target number one. That's gonna be the tight nine, and that's gonna be on this main farm that Lee and I hunted that GQ buck on all of November. If you remember, we had that awesome encounter with him. Late November, we were in the bedding area. And you know, I've been trying to kill that deer for the last two seasons, and obviously he's still roaming. So haven't been able to get the job done. You know, going into the late season, I thought we were going to have a pretty good shot at having a good pattern on this deer. And unfortunately, that's just not the case. You know, early December, he was doing a pretty similar thing to what he had done the years before. And he was actually hitting that green plot that we were having all those encounters with GQ. And ever since then, it's been kind of sporadic as far as daylight movement and more importantly, just any spots that I'm picking him up on camera. As of right now, the most recent photo I have is December 16th. He went by that scrape tree and since then haven't had anything. So I know he's still in that same general core area. And as I mean, as you guys saw multiple days that we were hunting that GQ deer, there's a whole long ridge of standing beans. He could be popping in there at any point and we just would be missing him on the camera. So we're gonna hunt that deer as if he is there. I, like I said, don't have a pattern, but I'm gonna base that off of past history with him and just the way that the food sets up. I'm hoping that we're just missing him on the camera. So definitely high on the list, but the other deer is actually on the draw farm. And if you guys remember, that's the place that I gained permission on this past summer and was able very fortunately to harvest that big deer with all the velvet. And admittedly, I haven't been back to that farm since the day I killed that deer. So you're talking all the way back to October 1st. Until today, Max and I actually snuck over there midday and I switched around cameras and I'm just trying to get some last minute intel on what exactly we're gonna do. The way that farm is setting up right now is that there's two different spots with standing beans and there's a target on that farm. He's a short time nine pointer with a bunch of junk on his bases. We've actually had him since the summertime. He was there all the way through velvet, was there some during the fall and then showed up at the beginning of December and has been pretty dang consistent for the entire month. So tonight, after all of the stuff that we did with moving cameras and whatnot, we actually got him on a camera that I've had and haven't touched since we put him out in the summer. And he was there and it was somewhere around 5.08 p.m. So, you know, it was right on the cusp of shooting light. I think when we looked, it would have given us 15 minutes until legal shooting time. Not really sure what the camera would have shown as far as filming, but he was on his feet and he was making, you know, his way towards one of those bean plots. So once we got that picture, I started really trying to figure out, can we backwards this guy's pattern? And I'm not saying that it's a 100% foolproof pattern, but what I figured out is he's actually making his way to the brow plot. And when he's making his way to the brow plot, it's anywhere from 6 to 8 to 9 p.m. He does something and then he's making his way back through between 2 and 5 a.m. So my theory is that he's making his way from that bedding area. Now I've got two different instances in the last five days where he's going by that same camera. And he's gone by at 4 p.m. and then tonight at 5 p.m. And that he's making his way down, you can see in this drone shot, I think he's wrapping around this big hill and he's just simply making his way to the brow plot. He's going and feeding in that big and beastie and then I think he's making his way to the beans and then he just comes back. Um, you know, my biggest concern, and I was talking to Max about it as far as, I think what we're gonna do is go after him tomorrow night. I mean, I talk about the MRI and we've got the exact same conditions tomorrow, north, northwest winds, and it's just gonna be a little bit colder and a little bit windier. My biggest concern is how can we get in clean because I think he's betting very close to where that camera is. And more importantly, how are we gonna get out without busting him and basically screwing up any chance to go after him again? Well, based on this new theory, he shouldn't be anywhere close as far as 
you know, getting out goes. So I think we're going to be okay on the getting out part. The biggest thing is going to be getting in. And the thing I think is important to mention tomorrow, we have very high winds midday. You're talking 20 to 25 mile an hour sustained. Hopefully that's going to be able to get us in quiet because it's not exactly the best access in the world. We do have to go through some timber. And I'm just hoping that he's going to be on the south facing side of this big ridge, out of that wind, with someone's beating down on him, and that he's going to pop up because at 4 p.m. that wind's supposed to die off. So who knows, maybe we'll be able to have a similar situation to what we had with that velvet buck and make the call on the most recent information. But that's the two bucks that I'm going to be going after. I'm very excited to get back out there. You know, I did get to pop to Illinois a couple of times this year, but Generally speaking, it's been a long time since we've been in the tree at the bow in Iowa. So, you know, obviously all of us are excited to get back out and after it in Iowa, but what you guys can expect next week actually, as of right now, is Mike was able to put a buck down in his home state, Louisiana. Him and Chase went down and have been hunting there for the past week. And as we're talking about the late season up here, it's actually the rut down there and they've got fall colors and seeing a lot of good rut activity, good mature buck encounters, and uh, as I mentioned, ended with a punch tag. So we're excited to bring that to you guys. We're excited to get back after it in the field every day. As always, we appreciate you watching, and we'll see you next week for another episode of Millis Whitetail.